In this video, we're going to continue to talk about requirements. B. Third technique is brainstorming. Okay, so the idea here is you get a bunch of people around a table, um, some, somewhere between you know, 3 and 15 people, often works best. You pick what's called a trigger question. The trigger question might be one of the most important features for this new system, or how are we going to deal with a particular problem issue. My suggested approach, which is widely used, is to ask each participant to take a few moments, maybe two minutes, maybe five minutes, to write down on pieces of paper their answers. One short answer, one line per piece of paper, and to pass them around the table. So here we see these, these things going around the table. Okay, Everybody looks at what everybody else has written, triggers new ideas in their minds, hence the idea of the trigger question, and then from that point, they, they, the, the, the participants think of new ideas. After a while, the moderator says, okay, let's stop and let's discuss these ideas that have been developed so far, and we can maybe prioritize them. Maybe we can have people vote on their preferred three or give each one a ranking from one to five, where one is must-do and five is not important at all. Things like that. Ways of voting, ways of prioritizing to organize them into lists. Maybe we can organize them into categories as well. Um, a technique called joint application development um, uses intensive brainstorming sessions uh, over a period of a, a few days to brainstorm a, a, a large system development. Another very important technique for requirements uh, analysis is prototyping. Here we want to build a very small version of the system that demonstrates some particular aspect of it. It might demonstrate the user interface, it might demonstrate certain computations, certain outputs, navigation through the system, but it's not complete. It's not a complete system. There are different kinds. Mock-ups of the user interface, okay? Um, ideally, we're going to produce this in a, a, a rapid prototyping technology that just allows us to draw on the screen so that we don't have to write a lot of code to do this. We want to leave out the, the computations that are time-consuming to develop, or leave out the database, or even leave out interaction with other systems. In other words, quick and dirty to demonstrate ideas to get feedback from users. Another technique which we'll talk about in a separate lecture is use case analysis. And here what we're going to do is, and we can use brainstorming and interviewing to do this, is to list the core things that users will want to do with the system. So in a university system, students want to list the courses, register for courses, display their schedule. Administrators want to add courses, add sections, select classrooms, and also register students and maybe do all the things students can do. So we have actors. Actors include the users, the different kinds of users, so students or administrators, for example. How much detail should be in requirements? There was a time when thousand-page documents were produced for many systems. Uh, there's a tendency these days to realize that thousand-page or 10,000-page documents tend to result in failures when it comes to software development. There's a tendency these days for people to suggest that we ought to proceed in an agile way, produce a small set of requirements for a core part of the system, produce them in a wiki or a live online document that is constantly visible by all the stakeholders. Um, but the, we have to write down more if the system is large and complex. Inevitably, if it's large, we have to write down more. If it's complex, with complex mathematics or complex safety requirements or complex financial or legal requirements, that requires us to write down more requirements. Also, if there's a need to interface the hardware or other systems, we have to describe those interfaces. Or if the clients are in a very technical domain, writing down uh, details of how the engineering computations are going to work, how the scientific uh, control of a chemical reaction is going to work, could be important too. Okay? And we have to also be more precise and go into formal specification when we have safety or extensive cost associated with potential failure or security risks associated with potential failure. All of these things require longer documents and documents that are written in formal languages as well, which we will talk about another time. 
So finally, in order to review requirements, we should look through them and we should say that the following things must be true. Okay? For each requirement, the benefit must outweigh the costs. The costs include the cost of development, the cost of using it for the end user, the cost of maintaining it. The benefits coming to the end users and customers should outweigh that. Second of all, it must be focused on the current problem. There may be good benefits, but we can't do everything. So we need to make sure it's focusing on the current problem. It needs to be clear, clearly written, and consistent with all the other requirements and with any other material in the system, any other parts of the system. It must be unambiguous. There should be only one way of interpreting each requirement. If there's any confusion, then the requirement needs to be refined. Make sure that confusion goes away. We talked about consistency. Um, it must lead to a system of sufficient quality. There must be enough quality in terms of usability and availability and fitness to need in the final system. If it, if it doesn't have the sufficient quality, the requirements need to be adjusted. It must be realistic. We must be able to actually do it with the people we have, with the money we have. It must be verifiable. We talked about that before. There must be some way to measure it if it's, if it's non-functional or constraint and we must be able to look at the functional requirements and say yes they're done or not. Ideally the sections of the requirements are numbered in some systematic way so that we can refer to a requirement 6.7 use case but by name maybe but each element should have a name or number that is allow, allows us to identify it. And finally we mustn't over constrain the design. The requirement should not be discussing the details of the design, the classes, the associations, things like that where these things are not intrinsically necessary for the production of the final system. That brings us to the end of this section of the SEG 2105 course.